Hey, what's going on YouTube? We're here with another react. Welcome to the corner. Appreciate you taking the time. Come through, click on the video and all that. Big shout out to uh, TIE Fighter here, who obviously has a smaller channel. Be free, like, Feel free, check him out. And he pretty much did a retrospective of Beyblade. You guys asked me to do it. So we're about to get into this. Huge shout out. So before, well, I already liked the video. I watched a little bit of it. I'm not going to lie. Feel free. Check them out. Uh, it's going to be down in the description. It's going to be his page and uh, for the video. So let's get into it. If you're between the ages, I haven't watched his video yet. We're about to get into it. 20 years, which is pretty much everybody born between 88 and 12, chances are you've probably had at least a brush with Beyblade. This is another one of those series that, for me, the nostalgia hits really hard. You know what's funny? So the other night, as I, as I was going through a bunch of the videos looking for a video to react to, I actually watched half a season one of Beyblade just to like get back into it a little bit. So like, let's see his retrospective because this is all based off the original that started it all over here in the West. I don't even really remember where it came from or how I had heard about it. It just seemed to appear one day. The earliest thing I can remember is having a VHS tape with an episode or two recorded onto it that I honestly watched way too much. It's been a long time since I've thought too much about Beyblade, and as I am to do with things, I've decided to take a look back and revisit those memories. I'm primarily going to be talking about the original series from the early 2000s, but don't worry, Metal Fight and Burst fans, I do plan to talk about other series eventually. So, like, I end up seeing that there was those other series as well, and it's like, man, I don't have enough time to take a quick look into it, so if you guys want me to do, like, the other series, let me know down in the comments. Like most things coming out of the late 90s and early 2000s aimed at All children, the Beyblade was following in the footsteps of series attempting to replicate the astronomical success of Pokemon. But Yo, hold on one sec. And early 2000s aimed at children, Beyblade... This, this show, Fighting Foodons, man. Used to watch that every morning, uh, every Saturday morning on Fox. That was actually a pretty dope show was following in the footsteps of series attempting to replicate the monster ranchers success of pokemon but unlike most everything else that tried to do the same beyblade itself has seen an enduring sense of popularity sure it may gradually fade away over time but it always seems to come back a few years later ready to take on the next generation of kids you know, also i'm pretty sure beyblade is based off of a game that they have over there where they end up spinning tops against each other, the way how they wrap like a string or a rope around one of the spinning tops and they like try to throw it at another spinning top that's there to knock it out. That's what, that's what it's like roughly based off of, I'm pretty sure. The first products ever released came out in Japan in 1999 and were a Game Boy Color game and a few very plain looking baby. I didn't know they had a Game Boy Color game. A what? A manga was soon to follow, and within a year or so, an anime was in full swing on TV. Pretty soon, it was all over the place in Japan, and was getting popular and successful enough for their... It's the first episode. Very first episode right there. The of the world. The series sent and for me and a good majority of other people, I'm pretty sure the anime is what drew people towards uh, Beyblade. I remember the stadiums and stuff like that. There's a whole underground Beyblade scene over there, which is pretty crazy, too. We'll, we'll check that out sometime. Probably do it on a stream. Enters around Tyson, a young kid who loves Beyblade like any good toy anime protagonist should. He's apparently pretty tough stuff and is off to have a friendly match in another town to see just who the best really is. Unfortunately for him, the local Beyblade thug got there first and took everybody's Beyblades. Yeah, Tyson that dude's resolves a bitch. to get them back and sets up a match for the next day to do just that, giving him time to prepare and fall on his face a ton as a means of training, I guess. He keeps to his word though, like the show and pro tag he is, but his victory is short-lived as he immediately comes up against the way-too-cool-for-school leader of the gang, Kai, who flaunts. 
You know what's funny about these two as well? So kind of like the way how Pokemon has red and blue. Ty's supposed to be red and Kai's supposed to be blue. Essentially. Like, complete opposites. Counters. Wants his own Beyblade, complete with his very own bit beast. A sort of fighting spirit residing in certain characters' Beyblades. Leaning even more into that Pokemon Digimon territory. Tyson turns out to be no match for Kai as he decimates his Beyblade in short order. This you know what's funny? So that whole battle when they're going up against each other and stuff, this is when Ty found out how to make his Beyblade go four times faster the speed. Kai's Beyblade here just feeds off of it and just gets faster and faster until it speeds up to the same part. Yeah, nah man, it was pretty crazy. I suggest you guys check it out. This works out well enough for Tyson though because then he and his friends are able to band together and build him a new Beyblade. This time with the Dragoon Bit Beast residing inside his family heirloom sword deciding to enter its bit chip and then Tyson has a Bit Beast of his very own. And like that was pretty funny to see too because I, I fully forgot about that where so his grandfather it's almost like comic relief to be honest with you it's trying to get him to train right right from rip it's like yo you got to train the way how this sword has been passed down generation after generation the dragoon sword you have to like master this in order to obtain that kind of thing right and it didn't seem like he really cared until you see him uh practicing for that one bay but play bay battle from there, Tyson goes on to meet new friends and rivals at a local tournament and the likes of Max and Ray. Oh, and of course, Kai is there too, brooding off in the corner. They all do well in said tournament because they're the main characters, and with the result being them forming a team that will go on to travel the world and compete for the World Beyblade Championship. Now, for myself, and I'm sure for most others who were kids at the time that lived outside of Japan, this show was my first exposure to the series. We never got Facts. most of the games Same. that came out in Japan, and I didn't remember seeing the manga until much later after the series had ended when my... Yeah, that's a fact, too. It was like a year later. Bloom. So the main marketing factor for the toys was the show, and... Oh boy, do I have a love-hate relationship with this show. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, back when I was a kid, I ate every bit of this show up, licked the plate clean, and begged for more. And <laughs> in a lot of ways, my inner child still adores this series. But there's also plenty of other things that, as an adult, are glaring enough that not even my most powerful of nostalgia goggles are able to block it out. The <laughs> main and hardest thing for me to get past is the voice acting now i yo yes yes that's that's yes don't want to drag these guys too much they were just doing their jobs and worked with what they were directed to do and when i think of these characters theirs are the voices i hear they're what i grew up with but man could none of these guys seem to yell at a recording booth <laughs> <laughs> I know what's funny. This dude, they call him like Chief the Chief. Friggin' he's an analyst. He has his own bit beast too that he like synced up with his computer called Dizzy. And he just like runs analytics all the time about Beyblades. I'm saying that's like kinda cheating, bro. Kinda cheating. Shouldn't have a coach like that. It's like some kid's voice acting demo that he uploaded to YouTube, but he's way too afraid to yell or be loud because he's worried his parents in the next room will hear it. <laughs> it makes a lot of scenes that are supposed to be action-packed and intense just completely deflate. Yeah, it's the like, localization no. process really doesn't help My much mute. either. To this video, I actually went and watched the first 20 episodes or so in both Japanese and English just to compare and it was really interesting going back and forth between them and noting what they changed and what they didn't. Certain things being removed I get, like Max being half American and Japanese and peppering his speech with a ton of superfluous English. Obviously that doesn't translate too well when your target audience already speaks English. No. Or this whole scene <laughs> where they compare this kid's Beyblade to the drunken martial arts style and use alcohol and drunkard imagery. Very plain no-no in U.S. kids TV. But so, like, I never understood that when it's, like, fine to see in movies. Because a bunch of kids' movies, like, 
they ended up pepper peppering that throughout too, right? They had the drunky the drunken style and whatever for Kung Fu Panda, and they like kind of showed that shit. So like I don't know. Ah, it's whack. Other things like the fact that that's dumb that they cut that that stuff out. Younger are completely skipped over and not even mentioned in the English version. Sure, it's kind of implied given the fact that you never see Tyson's mom in the show, and he only seems to have his grandpa as a parental figure. But the whole scene where his grandpa basically lays it flat out is completely removed. They didn't even try altering the dialogue. They just completely noped out of that plot line altogether. This one I don't get because is it sad? Yeah, sure, but this isn't exactly an uncommon thing. And wouldn't it be nice for the target audience of kids who might be in a similar situation to have that to relate to? It's even shown in the Japanese version that Max's mom isn't exactly in the picture either. And it's so Well, like, it's kind of funny because you could even relate that back to Pokemon. Ash's mom's a single mom, pretty much. Right? And it, it even goes with uh, all the Digimon. All this, all the kids have like different problems coming from single parent families, single father, uh, single mother, or divorce, with TK and Max and all that. So Relatable. The two somewhat relate over. There's also the issue of slipping in jokes into the dialogue where there weren't any originally, or adding lines when there weren't any before and really don't need to be. Yes, Kevin. <laughs> it just feels like the mindset is, oh, That's some corn funny, all the time. Like, look, what? this is a show about spinning tops that bump into each other. The premise is already ridiculous enough. We don't need you undercutting any sort of dramatic tension the story tries to build <laughs> with an out-of-place one-liner. Yo, These are I some agree. Common issues for kids anime that That's were funny. adapted at this time. It's still better than the Duel Masters anime dub, but it's still strange. Especially when most modern animated shows today, even in the Western world, really don't shy away from more mature topics that kids are likely to deal with. At the end of the day, I feel like I can confidently say that the English version does still get the same overall message across. It just does so without a lot of the nuance to the characters and dialogue that the Japanese version has. It's essentially dumbed down. Straight up and down, dumbed down for us. And yes, it does do a lot right, to the point that I don't think I could recommend the Japanese version over it and vice versa. The main thing is the way the tournaments are presented in English. This whole series is basically one long, giant tournament arc. And the additions brought into the English version I absolutely love. There's the Blader DJ, who's a sort of ring announcer present in both versions. Here we go! But the English version is a play-by-play -play <laughs> -play announcer and color commentator that are usually fairly entertaining, and I feel like add a lot to the battle scenes and kind of help sell the fantasy of this being a sport being broadcast on television. Hello and welcome to Seaside Dome as we close in on today's main event. You know what's funny about that? Fishing's a sport. <laughs> so? <laughs> Go along with it's it funny that they end up putting that, that in. Even more, whenever there's tournament matches, there's a little BBA watermark in the corner of the screen to make it feel like it's its own channel that you're watching it on. There's also that's pretty cool too. And stat screens for most of the characters, their Beyblades and Bit Beasts. There's also team names and logos for each of the groups they come across instead of just being referred to as the BBA team or the Chinese representatives. It does its job to help you buy into this world where Beyblading is a really big deal. Right along with it, and probably my personal favorite addition, is the music. In addition to the opening theme, the English version completely reworked the soundtrack. Yo, that's a fact. It comes through like, like punk. It's, it's actually a pretty dope opening, I'm not gonna lie. Back in the day, in the 90s, early, early 2000s, a good majority of uh, anime TV shows were coming out with that kind of soundtrack for, uh, for the openers. To have a more higher energy rock vibe to it. Yeah. And 
they also went a step further. It's the by first episode a still. Whole soundtracks worth of their own insert songs, basically turning any scene with them into its own AMV. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. The music in, in the TV show was fucking jokes. Most over the years, and I think what I'm most nostalgic for. Just hearing a bit of them, and I immediately get rushed back to when I was a kid. In preparing this video, these songs actually ended up in regular rotation for me, and I am not at all complaining about that. <laughs> I honestly can't tell if these songs are actually good or if I just have such a strong nostalgic connection to them that I would like them regardless of it. It's kind of like we have that nostalgic feeling nowadays because of all that old music that we grew up with. It was almost like uh, American Pie with the music in American Pie and stuff like that, right? Even in Shrek, you have music that'll bring you back to that time, the nostalgia, right? It's the music. How good they are. But what I do music know is suck. That it doesn't even matter. <laughs> of flavor and personality to the show, and are much better to me than what I thought to be a pretty generic anime soundtrack in the Japanese version. And it does the same thing of being a way to further buy into this world where this toy they're selling is a really big deal. <laughs> It'd be silly to say that Pokemon didn't have some sort of influence on the creation of Beyblade, especially within the context of the original series where there was such a heavy emphasis on the bit beasts inside the Beyblades. They were That's a, a fact. bigger focus in the original Game Boy Color games where you'd collect multiple and they'd even have their own sort of evolution. But because That's pretty cool. the main focus was the toys, because they wrapped up what were essentially monster battles inside these battling tops, I think they were able to avoid a lot of the ripoff comparisons that came along with the likes of Digimon when it first came out. It also helps that the toys are just fun. The concept is immediately Base to grasp. You get a Beyblade, get with your friends, start launching them at each other, and you're gonna have a pretty good time. There's it started getting crazy when kids started making their own and like adding metal rings and stuff before the metal arc of Beyblade came out and stuff like that. Same with like the counterweight with uh, with the balances. Kind of like back in the day, there used to be Omega yo-yos, right? Yo-yos were fat in the 90s and like 60s and 70s and stuff like that it came back. But anyway, a bunch of people had their old yo-yos and they were taking the ball bearings out and they were putting it in these, j in these janks also the personalization try to stabilize it too, with them being tied to characters in the show I have them a little bit heavy for like uh, bumper damage where you can totally make them your own or be like me and just try to be Tyson IRL it's no wonder these things have been regulars at schoolyards for the last 20 years I even still have mine from the original series some in better shape than others and from the sequel series because when it came back I was so excited to see Beyblades again that I jumped right back into it even though I was entering my late teens at the time <laughs> and the girls I had crushes on were thrilled reflection I moment bringing them to school when I was a kid and while researching for this video I saw tons of comments online from kids and former kids who have done the same thing whenever each series was relevant Man, I miss my childhood. I remember a teacher took one of my Beyblades in, in elementary school, especially with uh, quarantine. I started getting back into Beyblade, Metal Fusion, which was basically my childhood, LOL. Yo, f facts. Which made me remember my past. I would never forget the times when I was a lot younger and collected a bunch of Beyblades. I would always customize them, find a new combos, playing with my friends, and going to tournaments. Now I'm not really into Beyblades anymore. I never even had one one from Burst series. I don't I don't know if it's because I'm already too old for these kinds of stuff. My friend's not interested in them anymore or it's a new generation of Beyblade. Well Beyblade ended up getting crazy when they it's almost like Pogs too, when they had slammers and whatever. You have like slammer bays where they're like super heavy, super dense, and they're like defense. Pretty much is like speed, defense, and attack. So it's almost like uh, almost like you're playing RuneScape. 
<laughs> rock, paper, scissors combo. Seeing something that was such a big part of my childhood continue on in other kids' lives. I think what made the show work too, and what personally really sold me on the series, was the adventure fantasy in the show. You follow this team of kids traveling around to several real world locations competing in a game that you could also go out and play with your friends, and I love that. You see them each have their own personal growth as they go through their own challenges, and also grow together as a team, and I think that's a really basic concept that will always work well. You want to see them come together, interact with each other, and overcome their adversities together. This aspect of the series was actually such a strong influence on me that when I flew out to LA for an anime convention and card game tournament late last year with a few friends, I honestly thought as I was getting on the plane, wow, this is just like Beyblade. <laughs> Are my Ta memories of these elements idealized? Yes, absolutely. My re-watching the show has made that painfully apparent. But it also doesn't negate my fondness for the series or the fun times I had launching tops at my friends when I was a kid. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Really appreciate you stopping by and sticking through to the end, like always. Um, if you are like me and super have such a strong, nostalgic connection to Beyblade, I'd love to hear your own personal stories. I'm still kind of bitter because I remember when I was in grade school, I was playing with one of my Beyblades like after class and the school librarian took it from me. Oh, what a bitch. It really <laughs> upset me and I was embarrassed to tell my mom about it. And also when I got pulled out of that school like a year or two later, I asked her if I could have it back and she just flat out told me no. God, I hated that woman. I honestly <laughs> told her mom. Like I said, I was embarrassed to tell her that my Beyblade got taken away. But anyways, guys, if you like what I do here, please leave me a like. It really goes a long way in helping me out. And if you want to see more of what I do, subscribe, and I'll be back probably in a couple weeks with something new, uh, something nostalgic as well. So anyways, till next time. Yo, that was TIE Fighter with his uh, Beyblade 2000, a reveal of the original, and that started it all. I find it to be pretty fascinating and interesting. He was uh, very knowledgeable about the series. The series is pretty dope and stuff like that. But yeah, no, man. Feel free to drop him a subscribe, a like, and all that, and whatever. I'm going to hit the subscribe and whatever. And any kind of Beyblade story that you want to leave for him to read over, check it out. Uh, yeah, no, man. That's super interesting. I want to thank you guys for making this suggestion for me to do a react video to a Beyblade and if you want me to do the other series of Beyblades leave a comment down below and if you enjoyed the video feel free to leave a like subscribe all that good stuff until next time guys peace